Now, collectively, Africa's economies are projected to grow by 4.8% this year and 5.3% in 2014. That figure, however, could be rather higher if African governments manage their mineral resources more efficiently. That's according to the chief economist of the African Development Bank. While presenting data on Africa's economic outlook in South Africa, Mthulin Kube said regional integration, at least in terms of infrastructure investment and maximizing revenue from mineral resources, is absolutely critical and the best way, really, for African economies to improve the rate at which they grow. He spoke to CCTV's Guy Henderson on the quality of economic growth on the continent. What is the quality of this growth? Is it creating jobs? Is it inclusive? inclusive? Is it giving opportunity to all? And the answer is no. So the idea of an inclusive growth index is to begin to capture the degree to which the totality of economic activity is, is to what extent is it inclusive. But presumably for it to become useful, people would have to make use of it. Uh, absolutely. We wish we share it with governments. Uh, we'll be doing deeper reports uh, you know, uh, uh, with different uh, countries. I've seen a, a, a copy of the presentation you're giving this morning. Um, and it talks about, one of the things it talks about is harnessing um, the continent's Africa, uh, natural resources um, properly to try and create linkages and try and diversify economies away from fossil fuels. By the end of that process, what's the point of having gone through it if those countries are no longer habitable because of climate change? Uh, well, well, climate change is, is a big issue. And I think that, uh, frankly, uh, African countries are being sufficiently conscientized about the need for climate resilient growth. The bank's own 10 uh, year strategy talks about greening African economies, which really one of the elements in that is building resilience to climate change. So I think you'll find over time uh, countries are getting more conscious about it, they understand what it means, they, they're beginning to know what to do. China is slowing down somewhat. Is. Uh Africa in a position now to sustain itself comfortably despite those things? In the last 12 months, remittances of something like $60 billion coming in, in, into Africa. Uh, this is the highest level that has been recorded since we started recording these figures. In the last 30 years, Africa has lost easily $1.4 trillion US dollars in illicit outflows out of Africa. There's a lot more that is going on, in my view, that we, we need to fix to pay for Africa's development. Is now the time for all countries, for the international community, to stop isolating, even in a targeted way, Zimbabwe, and just get on with the business of developing its economy and um, ending, really, the suffering of its, of its ordinary citizens? No, I, I think so. I think that uh, Zimbabwe has run credible elections. Uh, there have been some issues here and there. Those have been raised, raised by experts and not by us at, 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 at the bank. Our view is uh, uh, we, we, as a bank, will engage in Zimbabwe for purposes of poverty reduction, uh, you know, dealing with the development deficit as we see it. And really, uh, international investors should begin to look at the country and see what opportunities they can you know, get into.